They're all smoking vapes. Wall to wall vapes. Vape, 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 vape. Hello and welcome to the SP Show. My name is Tatton. I'm the SP founder, and oh my goodness, this is a dream to be here with you on YouTube on the SP Show. It's pretty special. What we would normally do at this point is we'd look back in time. We'd look back at the week that has just been, but it's a pretty boring week, uh, the week we've just had. Uh, but it was news fest, if I'm honest. So we're not gonna do that. And then what we're gonna do is move on to your questions. But we're not gonna do that either because this is the first episode and nobody's asked us any questions. But for next week, you can leave questions in the uh, comments, which I think are below me. The good news about not having questions and the good news about not having uh, last week is that there's plenty of time to talk about the things that are coming up next week. And we're going to get very serious very early with this show because next week there is a big vote on assisted dying. And there's a lot to talk about there. Before we get to that though, I want to talk to you about smoking. Well, we are going to talk about smoking, but before we do, I want to talk about Heathrow. Heathrow Terminal 5 to be exact, because when they built Heathrow Terminal 5, they said, ah, oh, the problem everyone's got is checking in, all these long queues at check-in, we're going to solve that. And they built row upon row upon row upon row upon row of check-in desks. And by the time Heathrow Terminal 5 opened, nobody was using check-in desks. Everybody was using hand luggage and everyone was checking themselves in online. So you've got all these empty desks. But with more hand luggage comes more of a squeeze at uh, security. And they hadn't built that big enough. So they were solving last year's problem and not this year's. Which brings us to the smoking ban. The smoking and vape bill is in Parliament on Tuesday. It's going to stop 15-year-olds ever buying cigarettes because the year in which you are not allowed to buy cigarettes gets older and older and older and older and older. Okay, brilliant. Stop them smoking. Smoking's rubbish. We're going to stop them smoking. Ha! Never allowed to smoke. The, the, the trouble is, kids don't smoke. No young people are smoking cigarettes. It's just, it is yesterday's problem. They're all smoking vapes. Wall-to-wall -wall vapes. Vape, 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 vape. I've done a lot of research in this. I've asked two of my children from two different schools in the same area of Kent. So that's a lot of research, right? And they were like, they laughed at the idea of cigarettes, but both of them talked about the black market of vapes within schools. They're so pervasive that the people who are 18 or look 18 or have connections with some dodgy shop are selling these vapes on. Um, one of my children is in year eight and was just like, there's just, I'm constantly being offered the opportunity to buy vapes. So it is the smoking vape bill. It's not just that smoking ban, which is good because that smoking ban changes nothing if no one's smoking cigarettes. It is challenging vapes. We're going to get rid of cartoon packaging um, and they have to go, we'll get rid of disposable vapes altogether. But the idea that, it's only, that children are only smoking disposable vapes is just not true. Maybe at the beginning, maybe it was a year ago or two years ago. These things change fast and the technology just to have a little rechargeable thing that's quite flimsy. It doesn't need to last for long as long as it's not a disposable vape, right? They're cheap now. The measures they're taking away aren't going to cut vape rates. This isn't the way to do it. So everyone wants children to not smoke. So great, let's do this. Let's do this ban. Well done, everybody. Keir Starmer wanted it. Rishi Sunak wanted it. Everyone's on board. Let's do that. But I think that we need government to work at a pace that the free market works, right? So rather than solving yesterday's problem, we need to be getting ahead of it. And that's going to be the challenge 
for this government and its, I don't know, war on vape. Let's say they're going to have a war on vape. I don't think they are. I don't think that means anything. But that's going to be their challenge with this piece of legislation if it's going to do what they want them to do. On to assisted dying, which is in Parliament on, on Friday. There's a lot spoken about this because it's, it's, a, it's a huge topic. I mean, changing the law to allow people to help someone die is a huge thing. So the first thing I want to do is talk about exactly what is being proposed. Somebody has to have a terminal disease or terminal condition that means they have no real chance of living past six months then you can speak to a doctor and if that doctor signs you off and says this person is in charge of is what knows what's going on enough are together enough are collected enough to take this decision they can sign you off to go to the next stage. Then seven days later, you see another doctor and that doctor has to agree with the assessment of the first doctor that you are, you have it together and you're making an independent personal decision to take, to take your life. Then two weeks later, a judge has to sign off on the decision. And the judge can speak to both doctors if they would like to. And if they agree, you can be given the drugs that you need to take to end your life. And nobody is allowed to help you. If somebody helps you take those drugs, they are liable for prosecution. These are all protections because most people agree that if someone's in real pain, and their pain is only going to get worse, and they're going to, they're just going to deteriorate and deteriorate. If they want to be able to take their own life, that should be okay. Now, there are plenty of people. Um, there are plenty of people who are of faith, for example, who would say, no, no, it's never okay. But a lot of people agree that it, it, it would be okay. But... Also, everyone, a lot of people agree that people might put pressure on someone to go. People might make someone feel like they have to have to have to go. And that's pretty awful. So these all of these doctors and judges are there to protect people from persecution, so to speak. Now, this is a private member's bill. Right, so just briefly, you, you might not know what a private member's bill is, so don't worry about it, most people don't. Most laws are bought in by uh, the government. So Keir Starmer and his team come up with the idea for the laws and then they go to parliament. Private member's bills are where individual MPs get the opportunity to put their bill through and at the beginning of each parliamentary year they all put their names in the hat and they say we want one we want one we want one and then they're drawn out so it's drawn by lots they cover single issue matters so uh for a long time there was lots about folic acid put folic acid in our in our bread so we get more folic acid and that's now that never passed the private members bill but it's now going to government bill so that can happen as well um, there's one private member's bill. The next in line is about banning the import of cats and dogs and, strangely, ferrets. Um, and that's going to go through. Now, these bills are short and they are single purpose. This private member's bill, the assisted dying bill, is not short, even if it does only have one purpose. Okay, let's go back. Right, so you knew all that stuff. But the thing about it being a private member's bill is that it gets a private member's bill sized chunk of parliamentary time, which is, and this is the most they ever get, four hours debate. Four hours isn't a very long time for our parliamentarians to debate this huge, huge change in the law, change in the way the law sees 
life. This is its second reading, that's, that's the name of this debate, and it's going to go through the committee stage, which is next, and then the report stage, which is next, and then the third reading, which is the one after that, and then when it's finished with its third reading, it goes to the House of Lords and does all the same. There is time to scrutinise and check this. This is just the way we signal whether we, as a House of Commons, as a representative body, agree that this should be happening. People who say no say that it doesn't take someone else to be putting pressure on. So many old people think they're burdens, that they might take their own life just, just to get out the way. And others say that, that dignity, that dignity of being able to just do it yourself. Right now, it feels to me like the vote is going to be no on assisted dying. We've had Wes Streeting, the health secretary, come out and say he's against it. I think a lot of people are going to listen to that. I know nothing. It's going to be a really key vote. It could go either way. We could vote to do it. And don't forget, when we have voted, it won't, no changes will happen immediately. I think that's about 2027, getting things in place for, and the law's not even going to pass, the bill's not even going to pass until halfway through next year anyway. But if it does pass its second reading vote, if it does pass its vote next week, it will almost certainly be a thing. There might be some changes to it, but if it passes this vote, that second reading in the House of Commons is always the most important one. If it passes this, then assisted dying will be part of the British way of life, the British constitution, the British whatever you want to, whatever you want to say. That's, that, that, that's where it'll be. That's the end of our show. At this part of the show, it's all about being really upbeat and jolly and telling you that you should comment um, below and hit subscribe and do all of those things. And I really would like you to do those things, including your questions. Do ask questions for next week. But it all feels a bit serious today. I hope that you're okay with the assisted dying. There's a lot of emotion going on. We're going to hear a lot about assisted dying. So I hope you're okay with that. I hope you have a, a lovely, lovely week. I'll see you next Saturday morning for episode two of the SP Show. Thanks for tuning in. Love you. Bye.